Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. Hello, and welcome to my channel. Vice Rhino here. Cirrus over there. Hi. We've got we've got sexy Cirrus back again. I I am not, trying the not experiments. Not that meat Cirrus isn't delightful. Oh my god. <laughs> It doesn't help that I, I physically don't have my regular camera here because it's currently packed up in the gym bag with like my lavalier mics and all of my other recording equipment because I was having to travel to record today. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. But yep. um, yeah, so uh, everybody in the chat wants to know my opinion on the debate. So I will tell you my opinion on the de debate was um, I stopped watching after the first like 20 to 30 minutes because it was just depressing because like JD Vance was actually like doing decently and Tim Walls was very clearly nervous and like he was lying like okay Vance was lying the entire time like I don't yeah he, he was lying just as much as Trump was um but like thinking of it from the perspective of someone who um like someone who isn't tied into the politics of everything as tightly as we are. Um, they're not going to catch the lies. Yeah, they're not going to catch the lies. And Vance came across way more confident. And oftentimes people just have a tendency to believe the person who speaks with more confidence just because yep. human brains fucking suck. Me see strong men. Me like. Yeah. Put strong men on podium. Those strong men stand up. Passes yeah. the egg test. Now, like... <laughs> That's saying, I don't think Walt did bad. I just think, like, he was clearly nervous. He's, like, he's he's America's favorite dad, is how I've heard him describe. He's, like, this big cuddly teddy bear kind of guy. Yeah. And it's like, that's not the kind of person that you would expect to do well in a debate. So, like, it's fine. But also, um, also we have to keep in mind that, like, I, I was talking to you about this a little bit offline, but... Um, the presidential debate has a minuscule effect on the election outcome. I can't imagine the vice presidential debate matters in the slightest. No, the vice presidential debate doesn't have anywhere near as much oomph like, in terms of like what it actually affects in the every, election outcome. Every election cycle, whenever they announce the vice presidential debate, when I hear that, my reaction is always like every single time. It's always been, oh, yeah, that's a thing that happens. Because I just forget that it even, like, it took Walls and Vance having the debate to remind me that, oh, yeah, wasn't that that one where Mike Pence, like, ate a fly? <laughs> um, but yeah. Also, so. as of as of right now, where the polls are considered, uh, Democrats and Republicans are neck and neck on their approval of both candidates. Tim Walls, uh, in terms of who won the presidential debate, 72% of Democrats believe that walls did and 71 percent of republicans believe that jd vance did and who do you think would be a better vice president this is also split almost exactly down the middle 92 percent is tim walls 91 percent is for jd vance but that's 91 92 percent of democrats and 91 percent of republicans so we see an almost even split and a bipartisan split here. Whereas when Trump had his debate with Harris, you saw damage control yeah. happening everywhere in the Republican Party. This one, we're actually seeing an even split amongst the parties where both parties think my guy did better. And that's <laughs> basically a return to political norms. Yeah, it's a return to I think to my guy won politics. because he said the things that I agree with in advance. Yeah, uh, in advance for J.D. Vance. <laughs> But I guess some some highlights from the debate, some stuff that definitely stuck out to me. So they opened up with a conversation about Israel and Lebanon. Mm -hmm. They didn't talk about Gaza, really. But there Isn't was just a Iran? quick... Uh, like the first, Iran... first question was, would you support was Israel Iran. doing a preemptive strike on Iran? On Iran. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking Lebanon because that's where a lot of the fighting's been happening yeah. right now. I'm very tired, everybody, uh, for context. I've spent my time in, in Douglasville talking to the Democratic Party there, getting interviews over there, which y'all see, we'll see on the channel here in like 
four or five days, but I'm I am spent and tired. I have been up all day in a literal film studio. Um, but that all said, Walls did what I expected him to do on his answer. He kind of waffled mm-hmm. on the answer really, really hard. And I but I don't think he had many options, right? You can't yeah. give the response that most leftists wants you to have, which is, hey, maybe genocide's bad. Uh, you can't really do that in a debate when Iran is a classic enemy of the United States in general, irrespective of their support for places like Gaza, insofar as that goes. So he gave the response we kind of expected him to give. The response from Vance, though, was really, really weird. He started off with a fucking biography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of instead of answering with a, it was a yes or no question. Would you support a preemptive strike? And instead of answering that question, he starts by going, I I want to answer the question, but first... I grew up in a working-class family. I want to give a little bit of... I want to give an introduction to myself. Uh, I recognize a lot of Americans don't know who I am. I want to convince you tonight over the next 90 minutes... That that I'm not weird. Yeah, that it's it's me and the couch wasn't real. Yeah, it 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 was a bit weird, that pivot. Yeah, it felt... Very, very, very strange. But I mean, uh, on... I, feel, I feel like the whole Israel thing wasn't handled well by anyone, the moderators included, because like, some, like, I don't know, maybe I'm too black and white on this. They just didn't fucking talk about Gaza well, at all. That wasn't brought up, yeah. which is weird. Well, yeah, there's that too, but it, like, maybe I'm just too black and white on this, sh- this issue, but like, they phrased it like, oh, Israel is on the brink of war with Iran, and, uh... We're just ignoring I'm, I'm, what they've been doing I'm sitting, with Lebanon. Well, I'm sitting there like, didn't they just, didn't Iran just like launch a bunch of missiles at them like today? Yeah. This is like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like exchanging missile fire with another country is not the brink of war. That's just war. Like whether it's been officially declared or not, like whatever, that's a technicality. That's war. That's what war is. I think it's I, I think the the reason there's a technicality there is because Israel does have the Iron Dome defense system. So Yeah, so the we- the attack was mostly ineffective. Yeah, it, it gets mostly nullified and that's I think it, it comes down to there weren't as many casualties as there could have been therefore. But it's it's it in any common sense world, as much as I hate using that word, in any common sense world, yes, sending a bunch of fucking missiles at a country is, is a declaration of war. Yeah. Um so when the conversation moved to climate change, it felt even weirder because instead of talking about climate change, J.D. Vance pivoted to oh. America has too many jobs in China. I remember that. It was like, he's like, oh, yeah, Trump and I are for clean air. And the way we get clean air is by bringing manufacturing jobs back home like putting putting a bunch of factories in the united states doesn't cl- like now don't get me wrong there needs to be reformation to like make factories cleaner and well, a lot of times the- one of the reasons they do go off like overseas is because of uh looser environmental regulations um mm-hmm. but like they literally are trying to like gut the epa to a point where it's not going to be like, they, haven't they already like, like hasn't Trump the Supreme wanted... Court already declared that the EPA has no teeth? Well, Trump also yanked us out of the Paris Climate Accords yeah. when he was president. So, like, I I don't want to hear any any weird conversations about if we bring America. Like, there were three separate questions that JD Vance answered with, "Well, if we bring American jobs back, that'll solve that problem." Like. Bringing those jobs back to America does not by default solve the problem of them being cleaner. And the way that he yeah. he worded it, he described the countries that those factories were going to as dirty countries. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. he did make an appeal that I think most leftists would would agree is a good one. Uh, he pointed out that a lot of those countries in, in, engage in slave labor in mm-hmm. order to keep their factories running, which is true. And it is a thing that needs to be solved. However, there is an issue. The issue is that historically it has been the deregulation of American business that has allowed the shipping out of those businesses to those other countries in the first place. So typically under Republican regimes, 
more of those jobs are able to be thrown overseas. More jobs oh. tend to get created you during the, democratic leadership. Did you see the chart that I, I don't know where it came from? So take it with a grain of salt, but it was like um, manufacturing jobs in the United States over time. And it would like listed which president was in charge. And um, mm -hmm. under Trump, it was like almost completely flat. And as soon as <laughs> Biden took over, it like shot up through the roof. It's like, well, yeah, we had like 80,000 new manufacturing jobs created under Biden. Yeah. Like in general, you get a Democratic president in, they have a better track record on this kind of stuff. They are trusted less with the economy. Propaganda is very, very good. Mm -hmm. But typically you get the deficit going down. You get the, the national debt goes down when you have a Democrat in office. Jobs tend to go up when you have a Democrat in office. Um so it's very, very weird that that Vance pivoted so hard on that every single time, especially when it had nothing to do with the question. Now, the, the part about the debate that I think swung it around, though, and it was the part that all of us were kind of waiting for with bated breath. It was when the certification of the 2020 election came up as a, a point of question as to J.D. Vance, you know, hey, you said you wouldn't have certified the election. Uh, you would have made another magical pull out of your ass way of getting the election certified. Uh, so do you stand by that? And J.D. Vance waffled on that. And then Tim Walls pressed him and said, no, hold on. Do, who, do you think that Donald Trump lost the election? I did see that clip. And J.D. Vance responds, you're focused on the past. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on the future. And Walls immediately did exactly what he was supposed to do. He picked up on that and went, that is a damning non-answer. Yep. That is a very damning non-answer. And he, I think that moment of the debate is when things turned over in Walls' favor because he was able to point out, hey, you should be able to have confidence in your American elections. This is not how you inspire confidence in the American election system. This is how you sow chaos. Yeah. Um, I would just like to point out that my uh, Twitch chat has decided that uh, Shady Pants Vance is a nickname for him now. Shady Pants Vance? Yeah. There have been multiple oh, okay. people kind of settled on that. They're having a little conversation about that. And like, I, I approve. I think, that, I think that fits. Yeah. Also, uh, one thing that Walls did very good later on in the debate as well was point out, and this is where I think it, it comes down to a unique aspect of how this debate goes because the both of the vice president picks one is not looking at an incumbent president they're looking at a vice president who is trying to become president and the other one is looking at a previously incumbent uh president so when we're talking about the policy issues that each person failed on most of the things that you throw at Harris are actually going to stick to Biden yeah and not Harris oh, but most yeah, of the he... things you uh, yeah. I, I did notice that in the part of the debate that I did watch was that every single answer was like, well, Harris has been in power for four years. How come she hasn't done anything? And of like, course no, she hasn't. She's been a vice president. Yeah. And it, like Tim Walls can't respond with, well, the vice president doesn't actually do anything except cast tie breaking votes because he's arguing <laughs> that like it's a super important job that I would like you to hire me for. So you can't just yeah. you can't go into the job interview saying this job actually is nothing. Um, yeah, but you, you can't do that. So like when. But like when, that, that is it is the case that Harris has not been in charge of this administration. She's the backup if something yeah. happens to the old man. When uh, when pressed on each of these issues, the common refrain that can be given and, and Walls did not give it often enough because, again, he, he was not in a position where he could is that. That's not a Harris issue. That's a Biden issue. Yes, Harris shares in that, but that's like saying she's, that Pence she's not the one driving the boat right now. Yeah, she's not the one driving the boat. She is the one shoveling coal into the engine, hoping that it's going in the right direction. Whereas when Walls got to talk about policies that Trump failed on, he got to say things like Donald Trump had four years. He had four years to build you a big, beautiful wall and make Mexico pay for it. And less than 2% of that wall ever even got built. And Mexico didn't pay a dime towards it. But here we are again, nine years afterwards, 
and y'all are doing the same dehumanizing song and dance, trying to get this thing built that's not going to solve the problem and wasn't okay. even built the first time when you promised it. Drew Harrison says the VP also chairs the Senate. Is that why... Is that why Vance is going for this job? He just heard that there was a chair involved. Oh my God, there's a chair? Someone's got to tell him. Maybe he'll drop out. It's like, that's not what chair means in this context. Also, uh, Walls, again, this is in the latter half of the debate where Walls is performing better. J.D. Vance tried to say that uh, Donald Trump was one of the best bipartisan presidents that we've ever had. And I oh. think that's... And I think that's it's it's carryover from Biden rhetoric, right? Because when Biden got into office, he fought very, very hard on the platform of I'm not a Democratic president. I'm an American president. That was a that's a thing that he yep. ran on that Trump stole retroactively. And I think J.D. Vance oh. during his debate prep. Trump takes so much credit from both Biden and uh, Obama, like good things that happened on either end of his presidency. He's just like, yeah, no, that was me. I did that. It was me, not Obama. So when he tried to bring that up, that, you know, Trump was so good on bipartisanship, Walls was able to point out that Trump's, you know, one of the major things Trump did was kill a bipartisan immigration bill. Mm -hmm. One that, like, it, it just went to his office and Trump killed it, despite both sides agreeing on it. Um, and Walls then goes and says, you know, we could have come together and solved this issue. But Donald Trump decided that it was better to continue to make it an issue because he'd rather run on the issue than solve the issue. And drilling into that really, really hard, I think, was a very, very good strategy. It definitely helped pivot him better in the latter half of the debate when it, it really did not begin that great for him. Also, Walls owned the Christian audience uh, very, very quickly. Yeah, uh, he brought the, up Matthew, the Matthew 25 yeah, thing. 2540. Yeah when he brought up Matthew 25, 40. So that was another very, very good thing for him to do. Because, and he did it preemptively. I'm glad he didn't mm -hmm. do it as a response because when Biden does this, typically he has to do it as a response, bring up his Catholicism as a response to somebody saying, this isn't the Christian thing to do or whatever. Tim Walls was able to bring it up immediately and go, I'm going to head this off at the pass. That was a good, that was a good strategy thing for me. I did yeah. appreciate that, even as an atheist, but looking at this from the majority of people in the United States are still Christian. This is the strategy. These are the people that you need to convince to vote Hello. for you. Oh. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Rosina says, uh, didn't you hear Trump captains him prices at $35? That's one of the policies that I was talking about earlier that came. Um, that one was Biden, right? Yeah, the $35 one yeah. is Biden, and then uh, ha uh, Harris is running on a continuation of it that will also include a $2,000 cap on medicine and an $800 decrease in yearly uh, medication costs or yearly uh, insurance costs. Uh, have you all considered just doing single-payer public health care for all? So we have the Democratic Party has tried to run on that once, and that was w when Bernie Sanders was a primary candidate. That was one of the things he ran on. And... Uh, we can mince words about Bernie getting screwed by the Democratic Party. Um, I I am perfectly willing to accept that that is one of the things that probably happened. But uh, as of I, right now, I yeah, think the I feel, party... I feel like in the climate at the time, even if Bernie hadn't gotten railroaded by the party, which I'm not denying that he did, but even if he hadn't, he probably wouldn't have won that election. Yeah, I, I think that the I think the Democratic Party at large, as much as I hate to say this, I think they see that healthcare is an issue that people care about, but they care about it within the confines of what they understand, and they understand the insurance market. They don't understand single payer, which is stupid. It's insurance that's way fucking cheaper. It. I, under, we've, we've I understand. Discussed this, we've discussed this here before. I pay yeah. seven hundred dollars a year for my family of four. Yes, I know. Yeah. I have, there's seven people in my family right now, but because we file our taxes separately, that's I don't pay for her health care. Yeah, well, like I, but I do I because agree that's how you. taxes work. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you 100%. It would be a better system. I think that the Democratic Party as a whole right now are choosing not to run on that, but to run mostly on abortion, which they wouldn't have to run on if they codified it. Turns out Democrats actually took some pretty good strides in codifying uh, Obergfell. It's one of the reasons why we're not actually worried about that being stripped away anymore. Codifying Roe? Because wasn't... Oh, no. no Oberg, okay, no, no, sorry. You said Obergefell. Yeah, you said Obergefell in my head heard Dobbs. 
right, was like, right, right. No, no, I was no. like, that's the bad one, isn't it? It's like, nope, nope, no, that's the gay we, marriage one. Yeah, we got we we actually did get that for the most part codified. So we don't have to worry about that going away under anybody else's presidency the way that Roe fell. So I I do have a modicum of confidence, not a lot, but a little bit of confidence that the Democratic Party will go, oh, we should probably codify Roe. We should probably do something to make this protected at the federal level now. Um, but right now they're choosing to run on the issue and not run on on the medicine issue, which sucks. I want them fighting for my medicine, but I, I recognize this is the corner that the Republicans painted them in. Um, though, as of right now, I am I am still not too terribly worried about Trump winning. The polls have things kind of neck and neck in most yeah. states, but I also kind of expect that. Yeah, and, Harris is ahead in the swing states. And, and that's I the think part that I care about. The, like, this is a few days old, so it might no longer be accurate, but the last thing I heard was Wisconsin was the primary battleground state that, like, will be the deciding factor, and Harris was ahead by, like, two or three points. Mm. So, like... But, like, that that's, that's one of those weird things, like... People that are in favor of the electoral college will be like, oh, we can't just let all the people that live in the urban areas decide everything and oh, well. like fuck all the rest of us. But it's like, okay, but like you're just trading like these few cities with big populations for these few states with small populations. Like it, it's still a minority of people holding the rest of the nation hostage, except if it's if there's no elef electoral college, it's just popular vote, then um everybody's vote is at least equal like and like who's to say like right now if you're a republican living in new york city you are completely disenfranchised mm -hmm. because republicans voting in new york not gonna fucking matter new york's going blue because new york goes blue get rid of the electoral college though and suddenly the republicans in new york have a lot more power so like getting rid of the electoral college is good for everybody except it'd be really good for the democrats because they always win the popular vote in the last like what 20 years yeah like al gore won the popular vote hillary clinton won the popular vote <clears throat> ironically biden won the popular vote too mm -hmm. uh rosina says i pay 968 per month for all of my medical insurances as a single person via cobra yeah i could not fathom paying that much because i don't have that much money um god i'm trying to think if there's anything else from the debate that really stuck out to me really i know that there was the point where they both got grilled on stuff that they said previously that turned out to be wrong so one of them was like walls being in china during the tiananmen square incident oh yeah, yeah. and walls had to point out that like hey i brought classes there all the time um i'm not saying that i was correct in saying those specific words but i brought my class to China multiple times, sometimes around some of these events. Yeah. That's not the same thing as me being there during the event, I understand, but like that was his position there. And then uh, for Vance, when Vance was told, like the direct thing afterwards was Vance being told, hey, what about you with your words you said about Donald Trump? And he just started off by going, I was wrong, first of all. I believe what the media story said about Donald Trump but they were all fabrications. Donald Trump delivered for the American people. Fuck uh, when they when He's they got such back a fucking to sell out. When they got back to Roe v. Wade, though, uh, that's where I that's another area where I think Walls was way way stronger on because Vance did his usual song and dance of saying, "Well, the rape is inconvenient." Well, yeah, because like the the Republicans have an issue with abortion now that Roe is overturned, um, because. They know abortion is an issue that loses voters massively in every state. Like every time it's been up for vote in any state, even the reddest of red states, abortion access always wins. It's yep. wildly popular. Everybody wants it. Republicans and Dem Democrats, just like Trump says is the exact opposite of the case that everybody wants it to be a state decision. It's like, no, no, no it's literally the exact opposite. That Everybody just wants Roe versus Wade to be back in effect. Um, but they also know that their hardcore MAGA base, their main constituency, that like the people that are going to vote for them the most consistently are also anti-abortion. Yeah. So like when those a... are the main part of your base, you can't alienate them by saying, oh, no, I am actually pro-abortion. 
you have to like walk the line to pretend like you care about bodily autonomy while still making it clear to these guys that oh no 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 it's okay i do still plan on curtailing women's rights yeah they they literally have to pretend they have to pretend that this is the best issue in the entire world because their main voting base the the extremists that are radicalized to vote for them no matter what are going to come out and vote and if they don't if they don't stick to the election was a fraud if they don't stick to abortion rights are bad if they don't stick to those things they lose the extremist vote as shown when nicolas fuentes of all people yep. decided to do his whole there are ten thousand people here who God won't it, be voting for you but I think that's indicative of a lot of people who, when they see that their their based extremist god emperor isn't holding to all of his promises, they're willing to withhold their votes there. So I, for one, hope to see moderate Donald Trump because moderate Donald Trump ironically loses more votes right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he, he posted on... Uh... I forget whether it was Truth Social or Twitter, but he went on... One of his all caps rants being like, no, if there was an abortion ban on my desk, I would veto it. And like, okay, first off, I don't believe you. Second off, you just alienated a bunch of people that don't want you to veto that. Yeah. So good. Keep it up. Um, <sighs> anyway, I'm a little bit annoyed at how well that subject would transition, would uh, segue into our first news story because we haven't gotten to the news items that we're not covering yet. And some of these were too interesting for me to pass up, so I have to put the segue aside and make it more awkward. Um, so first off, in the news stories that we're not covering, um, my anonymous source sent me an article. Uh, you remember that tweet where Mike Lindell was advertising his pillows for 1488? The, the 1488 one, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, How'd that go for him? There was some follow-up on that. Uh, he claimed that he didn't know what 1488 meant when Bullshit. his pillows were priced that way. And then, uh, and then when they asked him about it, he denied that he's a Nazi, but he followed that up by saying, direct quote, some media called me and said, are you going to apologize and take it down? I said, no, I'm going to double down. So he claimed to not know what it meant, claimed to not be a Nazi. And then when he found out it was a Nazi dog whistle, he was like, yeah, OK, I'm going to still do that. Like, the fuck? He's such a fucking idiot. Jeez, that uh, that's okay. This is why he lost to like a ten year old in a debate. Come on, the kid was twelve. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? Those two years made a huge difference. I, having kids in that age group, I can tell you, they can make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, make a huge difference in people's opinions of Mike Lindell. <laughs> Uh, there was another story sent to me that uh, college student voting rates are uh, at a record high. 50% um, of college students voted in the 2020 election compared to a typical 15 to 20% for that age bracket. Um, and this high turnout is being driven by things like climate change, reproductive rights, and LGBTQ rights, which Imagine. doesn't bode well for Republicans, since those are all things they're against. Well, I mean, they're not against climate change. They're against doing anything to stop it. Look, if you just have... Okay, actually, this is one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit more um, that I, I forgot about this. Um, so the thing with climate change, the thing with climate change, yes, having uh, newly industrialized uh, nations producing a lot of our goods, one of the... Slave labor is a huge problem with that uh, that needs to be dealt with. Another problem is that historically... When a nation becomes industrialized, their carbon footprint increases. However, also historically, the longer they stay industrialized, the more their carbon footprint decreases mm -hmm. as their technology develops and gets more efficient. This is a thing that ha this is how it uh, the carbon footprint in America was decreased. We got better at doing this thing. We got more. We got better at doing regulations for it. We got better at having. Uh, Nucle like nuclear power plants ended up expanding here to a degree. It's kind of stalled a bit now, but a lot of our practices improved. And that's a thing that you can have in those nations. There's nothing wrong with having industrialized nations that we can trade with. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to have more jobs in America for people because people can't afford fucking milk right now. But there's nothing wrong with other nations it being import export partners with us that prevents us from going to war with more people. Yeah. In fact, actually, one of the nations that we are an import export partner with, uh, Taiwan, there have been Republicans who have argued that the minute that we are able to manufacture the chipsets that we get from Taiwan, uh, we will start abandoning them and then let letting China take them over because we lose them as an import-export partner once we are the only ones who are manufacturing them. So there's actual fucking political ramifications to that that are very, very bothersome. I remember there was something else on that that was on my mind. Yeah, no, well, that that tracks. Um, And last up on the stories that we're not covering, uh, this, this one was just like, I wanted to cover it as a main story, but there's, there's just not enough meat there. Um... There's a, there's an unmarried, child-free Republican candidate that uh, borrowed a, uh, his friend's wife and children for a campaign photo to pretend what? that they were his so that he could seem more relatable. He, he borrowed their wife and kids? Isn't that just, isn't that just polyamory with extra steps? I, only if they're doing stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, it's it's just... Because, you know, he's running for an office with the party with the where the vice presidential candidate is on record as saying that people without children don't have a stake in the future of the country, so they don't deserve to vote. Mm -hmm. So he's got to present as a family man when he's not. Now, to be fair, he is engaged to someone like he's got a fiance and they just don't have kids yet or whatever. So like whatever. <laughs> but like the fact that he felt the need to pretend to have a wife and kids it just, it's so, it's so telling of the Republican mindset. Like, it's, it's, it, it's, it's weird. Okay, so like. They don't, they don't care what, about the substance. They just want the appearance. So like, when I was talking with the, the Democratic Ooh, campaign, uh, when I was talking with the people in Douglasville who, who are in charge of that on both the local side and the Harris Wall side, every single one of them, I referred to my channel. Hey. This is the channel where I'm going to be doing stuff. I normally use a VTuber avatar. I talk with people through that avatar a lot, and it gives me a niche audience that not a lot of people end up reaching to. And irrespective of the fact that that avatar was brought on after years of other stuff happening, there are still people who came here for the avatar first, weirdly, and then stayed for the politics. You, which you is say a, weirdly, but I know your audience. It's, it's fucking fascinating to me, but not in the way you think. Um, so... It's it strikes me as so awkward that somebody would be so paranoid about their image and go, no, 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 I have to hide the fact that I, too, am childless cat lady. I have to hide that fact or Daddy Vance won't like me. 30 to 50 annoyingly feral Peccaries newsletters said uh, sent a two dollar super chat said funding service Mandarin lessons to apologize. Um, I appreciate that, but uh, th this is my channel. You have You're... to go to Cirrus's channel to fund Cirrus's stuff. I will take yeah, your $2. I, I don't get money from Rhino's channel, will, and Rhino doesn't get money from my channel. I will use them for not Mandarin lessons. I will, okay, will, let's be real. I'm going to feed them kids for Mandarin You're going to use going to, them for Mandarin oranges. I, probably, actually. My partner is on a Mandarin orange kick, so that's not outside the realm of possibility There you go. All. They're great for breakfast. I love oranges for breakfast. You, you miss out when you only hear my side of the conversation, dear. <laughs> She, she was very confused as to why we were suddenly talking about oranges. Boy, Dilly says, I came because I saw your clips on YouTube. Then I learned that you were friends with Rhino, who I already watched. Hey, I also do stuff because I watched Rhino. Turns out. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that I mentioned it all the time. So now I'm going to mention it more because you've called attention to it. Well, I'm also not mentioning things because I don't know if I'm allowed to mention things. Like about, what? You, well, the things that we were talking about before. Well, well, like in, for lack of a better term, let's call it the green room before we went live. The is it the CNN stuff? Yeah. Oh, my audience already knows about all that. Yeah, but I don't know that, so I'm not okay, just so, going to assume that I can like just blur so, out your career plans on my so channel. A quick, 
So a quick announcement for everybody who may not be aware. Uh, I am currently doing a massive job hunt where I am not only putting in applications for places like CNN and various places like Outreach trying to get involved in their uh, in the organizing side of canvassing. Uh, I am also trying to further my voice acting career. I've already done a video talking about that a little bit. Uh, Overton is still in development. I don't know when exactly it's going to be coming out because there's a lot of things that are going involved in there. Uh, but I've also taken on a producer role uh, for part of the development of Overton for some of the merchandising for it so that I can get experience doing that as well so that my resumes look better. I've also, like I've been saying, uh, been talking with the local people who've been running uh, some of the Democratic campaign stuff. So uh, this Monday, I will be doing a stream with the Georgia representative of District 3 to talk about Project 2025, because while my project on Project 2025 has stalled because I've hit the wall where my expertise just isn't there. And unlike GE and Caitlin, I don't have their wealth of knowledge to rip through the damn thing. So I've grabbed somebody who is an expert on it and does educate people on it and is also a representative in my state, actually in Georgia Congress, who's going to be coming on my channel to talk about her expertise there. Uh, I also have a video coming out soon where I'm talking uh, uh, to... Uh, Chairman Kelly, who used to be one of the chairmans in Douglasville, Georgia. So I'm getting interviews with people okay. who know more about how this shit works. There. So cool. Now everybody knows everything. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just in, in my head, I'm picturing like, I know you, like when you have your congressional person on your, I imagine you're going to be in meat space service. I'm going to be in meat space service. Yeah, 100%. So, cause like, I was like, um, just imagining like a serious politician popping onto the stream and they say you and your cat girl titty outfit and me and my wizard hat. And I'm just like, that's a good way to never get a politician to come onto your show ever again. 100%. That, that is. That is a way of doing that. Hello. <laughs> Rosina says, but, uh, yay, Sirs has concrete goals slash uh, jealousy. Um, and Jester Lord of Fools has joined at the basic level. So welcome, Jester Lord of Fools. Hello. Yeah, basic. Um, yeah, no. So Sirs and I were talking about that before the stream. And I was and like. He brought up like, oh, no, I wouldn't have done any of this if I wasn't inspired by your channel. And I'm, I'm sitting here like, and yet you are the one who is moving up in the world career wise. And I was like, I'm not I'm not really like putting <laughs> in a, putting in job applications is okay. not moving up in the progress world. only is saying, am I not a serious enough politician? Yes, you are. You are a serious politician. <laughs> when you win your election, you are welcome to come on as an interview. Hell, maybe we can do that at some point anyway. I, I think that would be a good idea, honestly. There's actually a, a really cool story there of, like, person who got involved in YouTube politics yeah. just watching that content uh, going and getting elected and then starting starting to do the work. Like, that's there's actually a, a big story there. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think you've emailed me before, so I'll try to find your email address and I'll try to remember to email you. Um, but if Alex not, has wit. That you Yep. I know, I know, they have emailed me, so I'll be able to find it. Um, anyway, shall we uh, shall we do the news stories that we actually came here for? Sure, absolutely, I mean, now that we're I was, done talking I was here... about my concrete goals. I would... <laughs> <sighs> no, it's not... I'm, I'm trying to think of a pun to do with, like, limestone or rocks or anything, and it's just nothing's happening. Are you, are you saying that no joke's solidified? Yeah. That that wasn't a very good one, but that's better than what I came up with. So you can have it. I'm sorry, I don't I don't have good enough flow for that. <laughs> you know, like liquid concrete. Yes, thank you. I I got that. Thank you. I'm glad you got it. You, you, th you think I just got <laughs> rocks for brains? <gasps> they might be mixed into the concrete. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just imagining the big troll from Never Ending Story. Yummy limestone. <laughs> Oh, they look like good, big, strong hands, don't they? <laughs> Did I lose a Cirrus? I lost a Cirrus. Oh, Cirrus sent me a picture of his of their of uh, his computer blue screening. So, yeah. Bye, Cirrus. Uh, that was bad timing. Come on, sir. Why why'd you have to crash? at a time that's inconvenient to me.
Ah, we got another hat. Thank you, Stoff. Uh, I don't know, sir, if the stream is still up. If it is, it is our stream now, comrade. <laughs> Actually, this, this hat has flaps. Should I put the flaps down? There we go. That's that's how you wear a shotka, right? Uh, Cirrus's stream is also down. Okay, well, you know, I, I still have the ability to stream on Cirrus's thing. I don't know if my changing that at this point will actually work. Katini, thank you for the hydrate. Um, I don't know how long it'll be before Cirrus comes back. Ooh. But we still have him saying uwu when people chat. So everybody sends super chats and we can pretend like Cirrus is still with us because he loves saying Urus. Or, uh, Urus. Uwu. He loves saying uwu so much. Sing a toilet song about Cirrus. Oh, so I will mention um, regarding the toilet song, uh, I did not realize that people wouldn't realize what song I was playing. So, like, when I mentioned that it got copyright claimed. Uh, everybody was sur surprised, like, you, you wrote a song, and your own song got copyright claimed? What was this, Bizarro Universe Rhino? Like, no, it was a, um, I, I just took the lyrics to Heart of Worship and made them about the toilet. And, uh, apparently I played it well enough that it was recognizable as Heart of Worship. Oh, oh we got a Cirrus, we got a Cirrus! Is there a Cirrus? There's a Cirrus! Welcome back. I don't want to do another fucking fundraiser because another oh, fucking whoa. thing of mine has broken. But this is multiple times now. I have watched this blue screen while trying to stream, and it is starting to directly affect my ability to make income. I want to ram my head through drywall. You know, very, very do, hard. Do you know what's causing the problem? No idea. Like, when you figure it out, so, mess message me when you figure it out, because I have a bazillion extra computer components, so I might be able to just, like, send you something. That would be helpful. I know that because this has already been happening recently, uh, Saki and I went to Micro Center earlier today and picked up a new solid-state drive to swap out my boot drive, see if maybe that'll help. Um, if maybe there's something corrupted on there. I don't know if that's going to fix it or not, but... Yeah. I just I am a hoarder when it comes to technology stuff. And I'm trying Why? to I'm trying to get better about that, but um it it like my my dad started a podcast and he did so with my old microphone. Ah. And yeah, I I have like three or four old cameras that every now and then they come in handy. Like when I go to Mexico and can't find the battery for my normal camera. I love that my OBS can't even connect to my stream now for some mm. reason. What? That yeah. just saying can't connect to server. I would start streaming on your channel, but I don't know what that would do to my stream if I change things in the middle of it. I I've never tried that before and stuff like that always makes me nervous. There's that's entirely understandable. I I am not blaming you for that. All of my frustrations are aimed at my technology not working. <laughs> Fennec says, wait, can we listen to his podcast? I don't even know what his podcast is called, man. I've never listened to it. Okay, let's see and if knowing, this is... Knowing my dad, he speaks way too quietly into the microphone. You can't even tell what he's saying anyway. Love you, dad. It's just saying failed to connect a server over and over again. I give, I give up. I I'm give sorry. up. I'm sorry. That's all right. My, uh, my, my want to run my own stream uh, is just... Man... I, I do not know what the hell's going on and what the hell's wrong, and I don't know how to figure it out. So yeah, this is fun. Speaking of fun, maternal mortality rose 11% between 2019 and 2022. Oh, no. Speaking of bad segues, um, and then in that Texas over the segue. same period. Yeah, well, yeah, but I like remember how earlier I had a good segue, and then y'all made me... This, this is the bad one? This is the bad... Well, I mean, this is a bad one. I wouldn't have had to make that segue if you're stream hadn't crashed 
Um, <laughs> Asina Salon says search for Vice Rhino's dad. No, see, I, I probably wouldn't tell you guys what his podcast was called anyway, because um, he probably just uses his full name. Actually, I, I had to make him delete a tweet once because he doxed me. Huh? Like, I, I just posted something and he responded with like, would you believe that I'm related to this guy? I can't believe that I have this as a son. Or like something like that. And it was funny and it was great. And I'm like, dad, you use your full name there and nobody knows my, can you please delete that? It's funny. Yeah. But just please. Uh, dox myself multiple times. No, I haven't. I have, um, I've said my first name. It's Justin. This, That's not Doc. I was about to say. Like I was about to say this Justin. I you am, docked yourself. I am like I have that shit locked down so tight that even if you did know my name, you probably can't find shit on me on the internet. Like I think I might have told this story before, but when Aura sponsored me a while ago, which is one of those like scrub your data from the internet companies, um, one of the requirements for the ad is that you do like a Google search of your name before you use their service, and then another one after. And I had to get like special like I, I had to get exceptions for like what I was allowed to do in my thing because when I searched for my name before using their service nothing was there so it's like okay you're like you can't really do anything for me if there's nothing there for you to delete because I'm a paranoid piece of shit anyway mm -hmm. but um yeah anyway 30 to 50 and not uh knowingly Fira Peckery's newsletter says no way Jimmy Snow has a podcast Jimmy Snow's my other daddy. Oh. <laughs> oh. And oh. Thank you for the hundred bits, my own and Stankfoot. Nice username. Says, I'm going to take my money and use it to get the message out. Your local IBEW office is almost certainly sending resources to the affected areas of WNC. Uh, I assume that's Western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, and ETN, which I don't know, but I assume that's another hurricane affected area. Um, I just unloaded a massive haul of, at my local 379, the Asheville WNC IBEW local 238 will be receiving and distributing the resources. Let's organize, uh, the South and get rid of right to fire legislation. Is right to fire. I think right to fire is the other side of right to work. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the the ability to remove somebody from your employment without having to actually have a proper paper trail. Okay. And just say, I don't like this person, and then they have to go away, which is stupid as fuck. Yeah, just my, my mind interpreted that as like a literal fire because it's like I'm thinking natural disaster. So I'm like, wouldn't the I flood, have a right to the, fire my gun? Wouldn't the flood pull out the fire? <laughs> so, wow. No, sometimes I'm just an idiot. There's nothing for it. Sorry. That's okay. At least you can figure out how to get <laughs> your your stream to work. My computer just hey. will. I'm, I've been trying to reconnect this whole time, and it's just not letting me do it. I don't know if you know this, but I can also order donuts. I can't hey. promise to be less awkward if I had to try to make small talk with the employees, though. Okay, good. <laughs> So when I was you, doing, do the you remember when you invited me on the stream to watch the debate live with you? Yeah, and I was just like, whatever makes sense. Did you get that that was a reference, or did you think I was? I didn't. I didn't get that that was a reference. I was just like, oh sweet, I get to have you on today. That's great. I was already having a stressful day. I'll take no. the friendship. No, so I, I'm sorry. Hello? Oh, your stream's back up. My phone just do wooed. What? There's no fucking way. It's not. My phone just oohed. Your stream has to be but, up. But it doesn't say I'm streaming on my end at all. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I was very tempted. I'm not going to lie. While I was doing the interviews, uh, I was tempted once or twice to just say, okay, good, to one of their responses. Just because we've, we've all just because, watched just all because. of the... We've watched... Like, everybody there... <laughs> Even one of them, like the old uh, chairman of the uh, Douglasville branch of the Democratic Party, she's 78 years old, but she's watched all of the debates and all of the J.D. Vance content, let's say. Uh, 
So I was like 95% certain that the jokes would be gotten and the jokes would be understood. But I was like, no, I, out of respect for the people I'm interviewing, I want to be able to do stuff like this again. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but man, man, it's tempting. It was so tempting. It was so tempting, but I didn't want to have that moment where on camera, I have to explain the joke that it's a joke at JD Vance's expense. I didn't want to have to do that. Okay. Fish says, Sir Sch Schrodinger stream live and not live at the same time. I don't know. My phone said, ooh, ooh. The only time that happens is when Cirrus goes live. Oh, no. That's um, the person I raided last time um, is is live. It was her stream. And... Oh. I haven't turned off notifications for her because, like, because what, what I did when I was collecting points... To make you say ooh, ooh was um I had um I turned my Twitch notification to the sound of you saying ooh, ooh and then turned off notifications for everyone except you. So, so it's allowing me to stream only to Twitch. It's not letting me dual stream. Yeah, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing, so I guess but I'm I mean, here. My Twitch viewers are higher than they have ever been. So as soon as you're back online, the guys that normally watch on your channel are leaving me. Yeah, but your two, your YouTube viewers tend to be higher than my yes, Twitch viewers. I know. Yeah, you know, I I know. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Cyrus. This is a mutually <laughs> beneficial relationship. It is a mutually beneficial relationship. Uh, Sylvie Snow is saying, all right, goodbye, second-class citizens. Yeah, my YouTube viewers are the second-class citizens of the stream. It's true. As, they, they as are my Twitch have, viewers. They actually have fewer rights than the, the viewers on Twitch. Yeah. You should change channel points to be called, like, second class something. I don't know. Uh, at least one... God damn it, every time I take the fucking hat off, somebody sends me another one. My hats are off to you? That's not even money. They don't even pay me for this. This is just points. Free points that they get. Should change well, that. Should change that. Make it so you have to like super chat five dollars to make me wear a hat. Except that would involve work on the back end, which I'm not very good at, so that's never gonna happen. So before we move on to the next story, nefarious name of nefarious name of doom says, uh, "Red wine today? How is it?" So yeah, I went into the grocery store that normally I get my uh, beer from, and they didn't have it. Well, they probably had it somewhere, but they like moved it or something, and I didn't feel like looking for it. So I was like, okay, like beer. I'll, gr I'll grab some. I'll grab some red wine, and um, I can be a bit of a wine snob. I like fine wine. I like expensive well, wine. I like nice wine. Um, this is the bodacious smooth red, and it's one of those wines where, like, you know, normally you get a red wine, and it's like, oh, is that a Merlot? Is that a Cabernet Sauvignon? Is that a Pinot Noir? Is it a Bacco Noir? Is it a Syrah? Is it a Valpolicella? I don't there's know like what any of these fucking bazil... words mean. Yeah, no, there's a bazillion different types of it's wines that it could be. Juice. No, it's juice. Th it's this one. This one is red, smooth red, and there. That's not unheard of. You can find, um, you can find wines that are like a red blend. But you read on the back and it'll tell you that like, oh, this has got it like it's, you know, 50 percent Cab Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon, 20 uh, percent Merlot. Like it'll be a blend uh, like they'll tell you what the blend is. But this one is like, no, nope, it's just red. These grapes were purple. <laughs> um, I'll I'll take that over, you know, anything else. Yeah. And Rosina says, look, Rhino's bringing up slavery again. Just wait till you see the video I just recorded today. That one's about sex slavery. It actually, Yay! I don't do this often, but it comes with a content warning at the beginning. And it's a response to Mike Winger. And he's a piece of shit. He is I, certainly that. I may or may not accidentally call him Matt at some point in the video because they're both kind of pieces of shit in my mind and both their names start with M. So while I was scripting, Mike I kept on... Mike Powell, Matt Winger. I, I kept on accidentally typing Matt while I was scripting. And there was at least one spot where I had to, like... Hello? Like, I didn't catch the mistake, and so I had to change it as I was recording it. But, like, that's not to say that there wasn't one or two instances that uh, slipped past unnoticed. <laughs> Hello? Uh, okay, someone just subscribed or something... Clueless expert. 
just subscribed for two months. Thank you for that. And SJL says Vance wants to leave it up to the state, but then criticizes Minnesota for making their own choices. Yeah. They are hypocrites. You're... Don't you just love J.D. Vance and his witty mannerisms? Uh, Purple Rhymes with Horns says, uh, even if they died accidentally, describe, uh, desecrating the body is illegal in every state. That, that was another uh, news story. Oh, yeah. Because like, if, she if, had if a miscarriage had a, in a if toilet. If you had a miscarriage in a toilet. What was she supposed to yeah. do? She flushed the toilet. She was charged with desecrating a corpse. Like, what else are you supposed to do in that situation? Yep. Ocean says, stop having the blue screen of death then. Man. Okay. Man. Okay. okay. So my partner who's in school to become I a therapist. Wish. She's in school to become a therapist. And she's she's doing her practicum now this year, um, or this semester. So she's actually like doing real therapy stuff now. Um, but she she's still got like school projects to do while doing the therapy, like reflections and like um like would you like she's got projects she, she still has to do yeah but she just got the introductory email for that like just goes out to everybody including all the new students that started in september and uh one of them was like steps to like here here's some tips to avoid plagiarism and number one was um Don't try do it. <laughs> try writing things in your own words Hello? And so she 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 read that and she's like, oh, this therapy thing's gonna be easy if I can just take this approach to it. Like, have you considered just not being depressed? Oh, you are, you feel like you're gaining weight? Have you tried just not being fat? Oh, <laughs> like therapy's gonna be easy. <laughs> just don't do it. Just don't do the thing. Just be just mentally don't healthy. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just be happy. Tinfoil cap, please, my lord. Also, yay! I actually made it this time, sir. Um. You did not sage your PC before the stream. Uh, Omnis Omnisaya is displeased with you. I, I, if you know what, you're right. I my, should probably like boil some basil under my PC, and that'll fix it. My tinfoil hat unfortunately got um, damaged beyond repair. But another crowd favorite is the octop octopus hat, and I know you're not on Twitch, so you didn't actually do a hat redeem. But I will make an exception because you actually gave me money like the hat people don't normally. So, yeah, no, I actually, I take it back. This is an exception. I like you better than the hat people. Anyone who gives me money can choose a hat. As opposed to the hat people who have to wait for the points and then I just put on whatever the fuck hat I feel like. Also, uh, Van Brigg says, by the way, if you can send us the show us the picture of the error, we can figure it out. OK, cool. Here you go. Here is, here is da error. That is there for you to see if you would like. There. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw my blue screen error for you all to to see. People on Vi uh, Vice Rhino stream get to see an actual politics stream. People driver, on my screen, you get the blue screen. Driver underscore i r q l underscore not underscore less underscore or underscore equal. What fails? Oh, so says Envid M Envid D M K M dot sys. I assume that's a graphics card related thing based on the Envid. And I do have an Nvidia graphics card, so it doesn't. Man, that would suck. That's probably one no. of the more expensive pieces. <laughs> if I have no, you know what? If this this can be an excuse for me. If I have to send you one, I can send you a thirty seventy, and I will put the thirty eighty back in my actual um, work PC. And then that gives me an excuse to buy one of the 50 series cards when they come out, which I absolutely I, do not need right now. <laughs> I have a 3080 Ti right now, uh, and that's why I'm I'm sincerely hoping that it doesn't it doesn't get get cooked because yeah. Okay, so uh, the, the Risperidone <laughs> and Risperidol are meds uh, that are given to boys showing symptoms of autism. Okay. But yeah, yeah. So to bring us back to the uh, topic at hand, um, so uh, the author of the study says we found that gender affirming surgeries are rarely perform for performed for Chan. God damn it, I can't talk. For the record, before I even started drinking, I was having trouble reading things today. So this isn't the alcohol's fault entirely. Do better. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna not blame the alcohol because it like I don't feel like it's hitting me. 
like the beer does, but wine is actually stronger than beer, so I'm... It, it would be but, weird if it wasn't. Ocean says, no more cars for you, just drivers. Okay, I could do it. You know... You no, know actually, what? no, I can't. I, I'm too, uh, I'm, I'm too much of a backseat driver to let other people drive me around. Like, just ask my partner. She, <laughs> she's probably a better driver than me. But like, anytime we're in the car together, I am driving because, like, whenever anyone else is driving, I'm just like, nope, 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 no, no. <laughs> but like, realistically, objectively speaking, she is probably the better the driver of the two of us. This cipher is too complex. Fennec says she could just gag you, but Fennec, now now we're getting into uh, you need that's kinky you territory. You need to sign up for OnlyFans if you want that to happen. Like that's that's kinky territory. Even I know that. Yeah, I'm not into that one. You said just a driver error update or roll back the driver. Okay, well, I hope that will be enough. Saki still update is, it and then roll it back. Saki is also of the opinion that my my boot drive is failing, so that's why we ended up picking up a new boot drive today. Not that I can afford a new boot drive, but you know it's, it's fine. He's fine. It's fine. Hey, boot drives are cheaper than graphics cards. They are much cheaper than graphics cards. It's true. But that's basically all we need to talk about with this one. Hello. Kind of good news, but uh, oh yeah, and bottom surgery is surgery is expensive and hurts a lot. I'm one week post op. Yay, Lady Merlin! I remember you from last week. Um, and still need to take Oxy for pain. You'd think people would notice. We have some leftover Oxy that, if it weren't illegal, I would offer to send you. But that would be very illegal, so of course I'm not offering to send it to you. That would be incredibly illegal. Yeah, no, that's uh, there's an opioid crisis. So, or so I hear. Sending people opioids would not be without a prescription. <laughs> um, Yeah. Yeah, so Fennec says, as an adult in my 30s, I need a letter from a therapist and a prior authorization from the insurance before I could even schedule. Yeah. Um, remember uh, V. LaBianca? I've been following them on Twitter, and uh, they've been... Tr uh, they did... I forget how long ago it was, but um, it took them a long-ass time to finally get top surgery, and they were, like, trying for it for years, and talking about it on Twitter and just, like going over how difficult it was. And it's just like the fact that it is so difficult for an adult who can give consent for themselves to get a voluntary surgery. When like, if you want to get a breast enhancement surgery, that one you can just like walk in, make an appointment for next week or whatever. And then it's boom, it's done. But like, it's, it you feels want... weird because then it feels like this thing that is good for the male gaze is actively encouraged. This thing that is bad for the male gaze is actively discouraged. Well, Even in that if it's case, good for in that case, people's backs. In that case, getting the bottom surgery should be uh, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Because, uh... Well, no, the male I, gaze I'd rather might... look at a vag than a penis. Well, yeah, but what about the male gaze? I suppose they would prefer the penis, yeah. It depends on what I don't know. kind I, of. I know. I know a lot of gay. Well, not a lot, but like I, I know some gay men who will tell you that, like, yeah, no, as much as they are not interested in the vagina at all, penises are still fucking weird. My, my partner yeah, over there, who is she, is bisexual, mm -hmm. um, but as far as like she, she's kind of like me, where like I'm pansexual but leaning straight, straight leaning pansexual. She's kind of similar but with bisexual. And uh, she agrees, even though she'd rather be with someone with a penis. Penises are fucking weird. I think my my opinion used to be penises are weird. And then they were like, you know, they're actually kind of attractive if they're on a girl. Maybe this opinion is completely and totally uh, built up by me dating Saki. Who knows? I mean, it's a whole person thing. Yeah. Like if I find the person attractive, then that there then are the little aspects of, of it person. that I might find unattractive on someone else that I find attractive on that person. I can absolutely see that. That's fair. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the story it was sent to me by Fennec. So this is not my anonymous source. I finally get so I finally get a story that's not from my anonymous source and I forgot to credit Fennec. I'm sorry, Fennec. I'm sorry. How dare. 
How dare you? I have failed you, Fennec. I will... I will put the hat back on, because I know that Fennec likes the hats. So this is my apology. I'm wearing the hat again, even though you didn't redeem the points. <laughs> okay. If you send me news items at news at com and I use them in the uh, in the actual thing, then uh, Cirrus will do something that is funny and creative for me to think of right now. Yes. Um, if, I, I will if promise you do, favors from Cirrus. If you do, uh, then the two of us will do a musical number together. Welcome Probably. home. I'm gonna make you wish that you'd stayed gone. We could do that I, one. I, I, I'm not supposed to follow up on that until we. No, actually I know. Get I'm to... not doing the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> I'm not doing the whole goddamn thing right now. I am doing the whole goddamn thing. No, but if it's a reward for someone who sent us the news article, then we have to send it to just them. I'm gonna make you wish that I'd stayed gone. Okay, now you just jumped right to the end. Well, yeah, because I have to wait until the part Fucking where I'm a. allowed to. Fucking A. <laughs> See what you did to us, Scott. We did our best. Yeah. Skimmera? I think that's how I'm supposed to pronounce that. It says that I'd stayed gone. Now, Cirrus was just jumping to the end because I didn't sing far enough for him to cut in. Because he, he, was, he was singing Vox and I was singing Alistair. I feel like my vocal range is better for Vox. I feel like mine's but I can't, better for Alistair. I, I, need, I need to actually have the text in front of me to be able to do the fast talking. I can do it. I just need to be reading it while I'm doing it. I have I struggle with doing the fast talking part while while doing it musically. I can say everything at the proper pace, but I, I fail to do it musically. I mean, the transition back to music from like the demon is a coward bit is probably a bit awkward, but yeah. Anyway, uh, how much money I... would need to be super chatted to force has been hotel do uh, do at midstream? Not a lot. I think it I've... would it, in an, in an ideal world with something like that, it would not be sent to either me or Rhino, but, but us both at that point. Yeah. I, I was, a... I was going to say like 20 bucks each. I, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Like something like that, I'd be perfectly down with. I feel like I'd want to uh, actually rehearse first. I think it'd be like they they send them they send it in, and then we expect that the next stream we're going to do it. Sure, I would almost want to do it as a stream on its own because I guarantee you that's gonna like it's not gonna be copyright striking stricken where it's like taken down but it will be copyright claimed because we'll need to use like a backing track or something yeah and that will true. very obviously like just go straight to them so I, like i don't want all of our streams income to go straight to you know a bunch of millionaires who made it yeah. big making tv shows but like at the same time if we're singing your song that's fine but if it's like <laughs> only if it's just that Oh, he said, if you have seen what I have seen, you would know pecs can be moobs. Pecs can turn into moobs. It's it's have, entirely true. Have you seen that thing where like guys that are like super duper jacked up when they have like uh, when they have like the really, really muscly traps? It actually looks like a small person inside a mech of a big person. <laughs> yes, they look like the go they look like the Goombas from the first Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You say first as if there was a sequel to that. Uh, well, there's a there is another Super Mario <laughs> Brothers fucking, movie. Fucking Bob Hoskins was drunk out of his mind that entire shoot. There, there is a better Mario Brothers movie. It was just done by Illumination. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they are safe. So points. Oh shit. Reploid sent forty dollars, saying, "Rhino, please send half of this to Cirrus. Preferences, loser baby, but any is fine. Love you guys. Um, <laughs> if I can be Husker, we can do loser baby. Well, I, then I guess I have to be. I cannot. I cannot hit the high notes for Angel. I'm not great at hitting high notes either, but I guess I have to try. 
Okay, that is for next stream. We have to, we have to, I guess we have to schedule something and like rehearse this I, now. I guess I've got to practice loser baby now. Okay, well, I think my partner has to work tomorrow, so we can do that then because I'm going to be too embarrassed to be like singing out if, if there's people in the house. It entirely depends on if I get a green light from the Democratic Party. If I do, then I won't even be at home. I have to. I'm sorry. I have to schedule you can, singing you can rehearsal. Be, you can be canvassing while singing, Cirrus. I'm sorry that I have <laughs> knock to on someone's door. Sing. Knock on someone's door when they open it. Go. You're a loser, <laughs> baby. A loser. No, I, goddamn baby. I open the door. Trump's a loser, baby. <laughs> a schmoozer, goddamn baby. Ah, uh, just be. Knock on someone's door, they open it. You're a fucked up little whiny bitch. You're a loser, just like me. Just like Trump. <laughs> uh that would not that that's not a way to win votes, I don't think. No, it's not. Mm, but it's a, not. it's funny as hell though. It's fun to picture. <laughs>